I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is an old cabinet. It's, it's not an antique. It's a reproduction probably from the 1920s or 30s, uh, done uh, sort of in an Italian, 19th century Italian style here. Uh, the reason it's upside down is because this whole leg assembly is broken, mainly the stretchers. Uh, somehow the wood was broken when it was repaired before. Someone used putty and then some screws. It didn't really work. So I'm going to need to take this apart, disassemble it, cut these ends, add new wood, and rebuild these joints, then glue it all back together. But what's happened here, because of that method, uh, this area was weak, it broke, and then in the past someone tried to repair it by using uh, wood putty. Here's the piece of putty that was there. Not a very good idea. I need to cut in here, cut up like that, and glue on a new piece of wood. Then I'll re-drill for the screw. And in addition to these repairs that you see from the underside, I've also got to replace uh, some veneer that's missing on the top of these. And now I'll do the uh, exact same procedure on the other stretcher. All right, I can now, uh, I can rough cut my blocks on the bandsaw. Now before I do any more shaping, I think I'm gonna do these veneer repairs. I've got in three of these corners. Uh, I, went, I have a box of scrap veneer actually found this old piece of veneer that must have come from a piece of furniture I repaired or something and I think it's perfect match for this probably same vintage
So now I just do the same thing you know, to this side of the stretcher. And then of course I gotta do the, uh, this one over here too. So now the next step is to drill these holes that the screw goes through, you know, into my new ends here. So I have to figure out how to measure this up. Now lucky I have a, a little indication here of where the screw came out. Even a little more of an indication there. So I think I'll drill from this end. I need to figure out where it's going to exit the angle. Let me try this. It looks like the exit point must be about there. And so now I'll measure back just about an inch back. <laughs> Happens to be right where that is. Here's my hole here. Maybe that's the angle. I think I'm going to try measuring that angle. Yeah, actually the line I drew was pretty good. Now one more line I want to make. It's my center. I want to start here. I want to follow this line best I can. And I want to follow this line as best I can. And I hope I come out there. I really want to use the same angle and the same hole so that it I can screw it to the same place on the leg. Pretty good, pretty close to my mark. Chipped out a piece of veneer on the bottom. I'll see if I can glue this back in there. Now I've got a, I've drilled my hole there. I've got to countersink this. This veneer keeps chipping up. I'll glue it back down. Now, I think I've got everything ready. I'm going to uh, assemble this dry, without glue, uh, and even put it on the cabinet and see how it works. Okay, so far so good. Let's uh, see how it looks on the cabinet. Okay, that uh, seems to work pretty well. It's even sturdy, I haven't even glued it yet. That's excellent. So now, I'm going to take it apart and do all my touch-ups on this stretcher assembly before I glue it together. It's easy to say, see, this is my new piece of veneer. Well, it was an old piece of veneer, but I put that there and this line and that darkness is the old finished from the old veneer so I sand until that darkness is gone and then I know I've leveled off the the new piece to the old okay everything's sanded up to 150 I have some uh, dark extra dark walnut dye stain here try it out in the bottom first to see how it works all right, now I'll try doing the rest of it. And to do the top section here, this is the walnut veneer. I don't want it to get too dark. So I'll put a little stain on this paper towel and
Okay, I've let this dry for a while, so I will uh, seal it with some shellac. Okay, now I'll sand my shellac just lightly with some 320. Now I can see where my new piece of wood uh, needs a little bit of toning. So I'll uh, tape off around that, do a little quick tape off with some 2 inch tape and tone it. So now I'm just going to uh, spray uh, two or three coats of flat lacquer on all four ends. Alright, this is dried overnight and um, it looks good, so uh, now I'll do the glue up. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, just as you saw in my dry run, I'm going to uh, attach the stretchers to the legs. And even though this uh, really isn't a glue joint, I'm going to put a little glue on here anyway. Uh, I don't think it can hurt. These are some little blocks, wedges I made uh, to fill where there was a chunk of wood missing on the tenon on the leg. I actually don't know if it was missing or if it was never there. Uh, I noticed during my dry glue up there was gaps here, so I want to fill those gaps. Made these wedges on the uh, stationary belt sander. This is so tight, <clears throat> my wedge isn't going in there, so that's fine. I got one on this side. It seems uh, really solid. I don't think I need any clamps at all. I'll give my screws another tighten, and uh, I think that's good. Okay, I'll let that dry overnight, and then I'll uh, get a friend to help me turn this over tomorrow. All right, here we go. This is this uh, maybe approximately 90-year-old reproduction uh, china cabinet. It's a very nice piece of furniture, uh, but the only thing that was wrong with it was these stretchers over here were completely broken out, and I repaired them. The screws underneath the, the, the wood was chipped away. It had completely broken and been badly repaired in the past. So I put new wood in. I think it looks pretty good.